five years into the future. You're faced with funeral expenses for your loved one. You've got paperwork and logistics and scheduling, a lot of hassle. But a little forward thinking now can save you a lot of heartache later. It's easier than you think. We're Brown Funeral Homes, family owned, in business for over 135 years. Think smart, think ahead. Brown Funeral Homes, Martinsburg, Inwood, and Charlestown Ranson. We have the tools, we have the talent. It's Miller time. It's Miller time on Talk Radio WRNR. A look at local sports with the play by play voice of local sports, Matt Miller. Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome into Miller Time on this Tuesday, November 27th. Matt Miller and Matt Crawford with you as we spend the next hour talking local and regional sports. A big win for the Washington Wizards last night. I know, Matt, you're excited about that, being the great NBA fan that you are. It was a win, and they barely get any of those as it is. So. Come on, it was a great defensive effort. That's all they wanted to talk about in the post game after giving up 131 points in overtime. It did go to overtime, so 100, 131 in the NBA in overtime isn't bad. Because you see college games that are in the 120s in overtime, so an overtime game in the NBA that gets up into the 130s, I don't think it's too awful. That's still bad. I'm not saying it's good. I'm just saying it's not awful. Points. I don't care if it's overtime or not. Play defense. It's the NBA. There is no. What are the shirts we're making? <laughs> shut, shut up and play shut defense. Shut up and play defense. Yeah. There was an article on NBA.com today. If you missed it, go look it up. I never read it because all I had to do was read the headline and go, are you kidding me? And it said something along the lines of, you know, is trash talking a lost art? No, that's all they do anymore is talk trash. Shut yeah. up and play defense. And that's where the T-shirt idea came you from. S- you say that. But does it mean the same? Right. Which I don't think it does. I think the art, I, the art of trash talking, which you just said, I, I don't think it means as much because everybody does it. So it's everywhere. So I don't think it has the same effect that it may have in the 90s or the 80s. No, because the guys that did it then backed it up. Yeah. Jordan did it. But he, he was subtle about it, though, too. It wasn't like you he wasn't really... getting in your, He would whisper something in your oh, ear yeah. when he was playing defense on you or something like that. It wasn't, oh, and, yeah. and there wasn't the Twitter that they have now, which Dikembe, is just taking, yeah. nothing quite like that finger, you know, after swatting something yeah. away. That was original. That was creative. All right. The Capitals got a big win. I know you're excited Six about that. Six in a row. We can talk about that as well. And a big night for uh, Nick Backstrom as he uh, set a new uh, Capitals record or at least climbed on one of the uh, the career lists. And so we've got that to talk about as well. And uh, we've got the uh, state championship coming up. We've got college basketball tomorrow night. But let's go uh, right to high school football as we have a special guest in studio. You have heard his voice throughout the course of the football season. You've even seen his face, but that was a still shot that we had on screen during Miller time. Now we actually have him in studio. Joey Urish, head coach of the Hedgesville Eagles. Coach, good to have you. Yeah, thanks, guys. Thanks for having me out tonight. Yeah, thanks for coming into studio. It is good to be able to talk to you live and in person like this. And uh, thanks for uh, having us at the uh, football office there that one afternoon to talk with a couple of players. you got some nice digs there. Yeah, we uh, we turned the trailer into a nice little office. Uh, we first got in there. It was a six-by-eight room for 12 coaches, kind of a little tight. So I asked Mr. <laughs> Lyons to uh, accommodate us with a trailer, and he, he did such. And we threw some old furniture in there and put some whiteboards up and turned it into an office. Yeah, got the TV to uh, break down the game film. That's a good size TV. Yeah, it's just one of the old smart boards that we kind of nice. configured into a television and put a projector up, and it works out well for us. And some of the guys put a nice television down below so they can watch NFL football on Sundays <laughs> as well. <laughs> How important is all of that to what you're trying to do and develop right now at Hedgesville? having those guys in a place that's kind of home and, and their family. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, when I applied for the job three years ago and I talked to Mr. Lyons and the, and the guys who interviewed me uh, about how important it was to bring in a local guy to Hedgesville to gotta give them that success, but to also give them somebody that had that home body feel. Um, so we try to make it as family-like as possible with all the coaches, with all the players. Uh, we're still keeping a little bit of respect. We try to keep those guys out of there as much as possible. We built mm-hmm. them a nice home inside that locker room. but. Uh, just to have them come in and, and be able to talk meetings or when college coaches come in uh, to give it a little home atmosphere for those guys to make them feel comfortable. How much do you think that's played an impact on the gradual progression of this program? I think it's helped out tremendously. I think those guys 
you know, when you look back three years ago to go from a 1-19 uh, program uh, to not having any familiar faces with them, having three coaches on the varsity program to uh, control everything, uh, finishing with 18 kids on the team. I think a lot of that goes back with just the, the communication, uh, the livelihood of, of those kids, and, and to try to get uh, down and, and, and deep in with those guys. And, and we've been able to do that with them. Um, you know, they come over to my house for dinner. They go to Coach Faircloth's house for dinner. We have dinner as a family every Thursday night. Um, you know, in the off season, we're together as much as possible if there is an off season. Uh, but you know it, that's that was big with Coach Walker and I when I was a, when I was a high school player and, and uh, one thing that I didn't have in college so I wanted to make an important thing uh, when I came back here and, and you know when I was with Denny uh, I talked to somebody about that today uh, I don't think that I've ever had a close knit coaching staff uh, like we did at Musman um, you know ever since. You mentioned all of those experiences playing at Martinsburg, uh, coaching at Musselman, coaching at Washington, coaching at Jefferson, and now the head coaching opportunity at Hedgesville. You've been taught by as a player and learned as an assistant coach under some really big names in high school football here in the Panhandle and around the Mountain State. How do you kind of take all of those things and blend them together to be Joey Yurich? Uh, you know, First off, congratulations, Coach Walker, for just uh, breaking that record. And, uh, you know, anytime you get the opportunity to learn under a guy like Dave Walker, um, you're going to learn a lot of key components to the game of football. And I, I learned a lot of those things as a player. And he gave me a lot of freedom as a quarterback to make audibles, to learn to learn defenses and to make coverage reads and, and do some things that normally a high school quarterback isn't able to do. Um, and then uh, when I came back, I was fortunate to have Denny offer me the job. And I'll never forget, 11 years ago, he asked me, you know, he said, what was your ultimate goal? And I told him I wanted to be a head coach. And he said, great, I wouldn't want you to be here any otherwise. And uh, the one thing he always taught me was there's going to be things where you don't like that I do, um, and you're going to be able to voice those opinion uh, things, but at the end of the day, it's going to be my program. He said, uh, but, uh, you know, when you get your own program, take those things that you do like from me and that you did like from Coach Walker and Coach Hunter and Coach Hash and, and mold them into your own personal abilities. And, um, you know, Denny was a running power offense kind of guy and uh, even you know coach Walker when I would play for him we were a wing T set kind of kid, guy and then uh, you know to go over with uh, Mark and, and he where he gave me a little more freedom to do what I wanted to, to do on offense and that's where I started to spread it out a little more and then uh, you know Craig gave us the kind of same freedom over at Jefferson with a lot of athletes just trying to get him the ball and you know Chad Williams does a good job with it over at Spring Mills now um, but a lot of people think that we throw the ball a lot but it's really just a glorified toss. Looking at football in the panhandle, it seems to have gotten better and better each of the last couple of years. Four teams making the playoffs this year. Where do you see the ceiling of the six teams that make up the EPAC over the next couple of years? Um, Jefferson County has a, a while to go. I think they uh, need to in incorporate freshman football back in uh, just to give those kids some kind of confidence. I mean, it's tough when you're asking 13- and 14-year-old kids to go up against 16- and 17- and 18-year-old guys. Um, so I think they need to bring back freshman football in Jefferson County to give them a fighting chance to keep kids in the program. Um, I just talked about Chad, and I think he's going to be uh, electrifying for, for our area, and I think Coach Walker's uh, you know, been verbal about that as well. And I think anytime you have uh, hardworking guys like Brian and I uh, who are young and, and passionate about the game that are going to continue to, to mold and, and learn our craft um, is, is definitely beneficial for both of those programs. And then uh, you know, Walker's told us the last three years at the end of the year meeting that he was done, and he uh, he's not going anywhere anytime soon, not with the <laughs> stable horses that he has. But uh, he's done a good job. He's got a great coaching staff behind him. Um, I think there's another guy that's, you know, in the line for the running when he does uh, retire. But, um, you know, that's that's the one good thing about all of us is we have a, a stable of, of good assistant coaches. And, um, you know, the, the biggest difference, I think, for all four programs uh, right now is the strength level, and I think that's why you see so much dominance with Martinsburg and with Musman, because uh, those guys have dedicated their time and effort in the off season to get in the weight room and do what they're supposed to do. Um, and we're starting to get to that point at, at Hedgesville, um, and and I'm sure that Chad's going to do the same thing at Spring Mills. But um, you know, fortunately for us in Martinsburg, uh, we've had a lot of athletes that we've been able to just get the ball in space and do what they had to do. We'll break down your season as a whole, the last game against Capital. We'll talk a little about the offseason and what comes next here as we go through the hour this evening. But before we take a break, 
Uh, let's talk a little bit about the feeder system as well, since we're talking about uh, those kind of things. And, and you mentioned, you know, the need for freshman football there in Jefferson County. How do you feel like the arrangement now in the youth football is going to be helping each of the programs as players that will attend the various high schools kind of get that opportunity to start early learning systems and being kind of groomed, if you will, to be an eagle or a bulldog or a cardinal or an appleman? Yeah, I mean, we, we started that trend uh, two years ago with the blue and gold uh, down at the youth league level, and then Martinsburg jumped on board the next year and had black and orange, and then uh, Musselman did it this year with green and gray. And um, I think that's a good concept. Uh, one thing that, that Denny said before he retired was uh, it would be nice to have seventh and eighth grade football um, to go along with what we have you know, at the freshman level. And, and I kind of agree with him just because for the simple fact that we get to, to control who's coaching those kids. And that's the biggest thing in, in that youth level is a lot of people get caught up in that young age of, of win, 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 and you got to do whatever you got to do at all costs to win. But uh, a lot of fundamentals aren't uh, being taught. So uh, it's important. Um, you know, Musman has a good stable of coaches. We got a good stable of older coaches, but it would be nice to have those guys, you know, come into a staff meeting. Um, and to learn the terminology, to learn the kind of basics, uh, you know, how to get a three-point stance, how to tackle properly, and those ins and outs of the game, uh, you know, to be able to take to clinics and everything. But uh, yeah, from when I was little with Jeff Arndt and, and Doug Arndt and, you know, those, those Danny Arndt and those guys, uh, we were my coaches in Midget League, and, and to, they were mean, uh, nitty-gritty football guys. So uh, it's a little different age now with those kids. you got to kind of coddle them a little bit and – uh, but it was fun, and we went and watched the uh, championship games at Martinsburg this year, and just to see a lot of those youth teams get to, to compete uh, says a lot about the area in this program. We've got Hedgesville head coach Joey Urish in studio joining us tonight on Miller Time. We will return with more of our conversation after this brief timeout. Get your flu shot at the Berkeley County Health Department, 122 Waverly Court in Martinsburg. Here's Angie Gray. There's two influenza A strains, which is the H1N1 that's been circulating. H3N2 is in the flu vaccine this year. They have adapted it to the circulating strain that was predominant last year. They've increased that to be a better match. Then there's two B flu vaccine strains that are in the vaccine. So it's quadrivalent is all that's available this year. There's no more trivalent. So you'll get all four of those strains to help be protected with this shot. It's time to turn up the pressure. Down the floor, into Canate. Slam! Dunk to tie the game. Takes him into the lane, puts up a shot. Rejected by Lamont West. It's time to push the limit. Down the lane, puts up an alley. Float! One hand, slam dunk! It's time for Press Virginia. His shot rejected by Canate. Canate threw it away. Tickets are on sale now at WVUGame.com. Secure your seats today. I'm Cole Wright, and this is NFL Network Now on the Westwood One Radio Network. It was an emotional night in Houston following the passing of owner Robert McNair on Friday. The Texans hosting Tennessee in an AFC South clash. Deshaun Watson throwing for over 200 yards and two touchdowns on the evening, both to Demarius Thomas, his first touchdowns as a member of the Texans. Houston, they will go on to win their eighth straight, a franchise record. The final from NRG, 34 to 17. In the meantime, Leonard Fournette has been suspended for one game for his involvement in a fight on Sunday versus Buffalo. NFL Network insider Ian Rappaport says Fournette plans to appeal, but for now, he will miss Sunday's game versus Indy. Melvin Gordon will likely miss several weeks for the Chargers, an MRI confirming he sprained his MCL. Rap Sheet says it's a grade two sprain, but there's a chance Gordon could return before the end of the regular season. This has been NFL Network Now on the Westwood One Radio Network. Napa know how. It's the biggest holiday sale ever at Napa. Like a Black Friday sale every day. With hundreds of items at their best prices of the year. Like a Bluetooth speaker with LED light system for just $29.99. Just $29.99. See, just like Black Friday, but nobody gets trampled. So don't miss Napa's biggest holiday sale ever. Quality parts, helpful people. That's Napa know how. Napa know how. At participating Napa Auto Parts stores, while supplies last. Offer ends 12 31 18. 
This is John Greenhut, and if your teeth are stained from coffee, tea, or smoking, Power Swabs is the answer. In five minutes, you'll see two shades wider teeth, and in seven days, six shades. Even better, there's no messy strips or trays that you'll have to leave in your mouth for an hour. Just swab your teeth for five minutes, and you're done. To try Power Swabs, call 1-800-679-0969. Your bright white smile will have your friends talking about how great you look. Try it risk-free. 1-800-679-0969. That's 1-800-679-0969. Coming out more Miller time. You scratch, we patch. Big K's towing service and body shop has been providing top quality work in this area for decades. Big K's offers 24-hour towing for local or long distance along with expert auto body repair with free estimates and all work guaranteed. Big K's repairs all cars and trucks makes and models and works with all insurance companies. Call Big K's at 267-6803 for your next towing job or stop by Big K's 312 Clyde Borum Road at Inwood for that auto repair estimate. 267-6803. Big K's. And we welcome you back into Miller Time on this Tuesday evening. Matt and Matt with you till 6 o'clock this evening. And then it's off to NBC Sports Radio for the rest of the evening. The Wizards and Caps both played yesterday. The Mountaineers don't play till tomorrow. The high school basketball season's uh, yet to fully get underway. And so tonight it's uh, one of those casual nights to kick back and talk sports. Rare night off. Yeah, I don't know how the Caps and Wizards can't get together with their scheduling people and figure out how to alternate nights. Yeah, I don't either. I get, I, I get it a little bit if you're playing East Coast versus West Coast. If the Wizards are out on the West Coast and, the, and then you can go straight from one to the other. Right. But I, I don't. You think they could? That they could figure out how to have one each night. That would have been would have been nice for us because we'd have been able to carry potentially one. Would have been nice period just to be able to watch both. Yeah, that's true. Because you got to give more attention to one than the other. Which one did you watch last night? I know you're which an one, NBA guy. Which one do you think I watched? All right, I know That's you right. watched the Capitals. You probably had your, your lucky jersey on while watching. That Hornby still got my jersey. Oh, he still does? Yeah, he hasn't given it back yet. Wow. Get to him in like July. You have to have to talk to him. I've that. talked to him several times. He just doesn't want to give it back. This portion of the program brought to you by the Mirius Group and Ameriprise Financial Advisors, John Everson and Phil McCoy. Call Ameriprise Financial Services at 304-263-4343 or stop by their offices at 1270 Winchester Avenue in Martinsburg. Hedgesville Head Coach Joey Urish live in studio tonight. Thanks again for coming in. Let's break down your season as a whole and let's uh, start with your last game and then we'll kind of work our way back through the year. Um, you win a playoff game in dramatic fashion. We'll go back to that one. That puts you into that quarterfinal round where you have to go down and face the Capitol Cougars. Uh, talk to us about that challenge and what you saw from your team in that game. Yeah, you know, Capitol uh, coming out pre-game, you sit there and look at those kids, but grown men. Uh, you know, and they've had those guys for three years in that program. Carpenter's done a great job down there at Capitol. Um, they just can't seem to win the big game when they need to it right now. But uh, they they got athletes all over the place. Kerry Martin was a, was a heck of a quarterback. Uh, but I don't think what they get a lot of credit for was their their line up front. I mean, those guys were ginormous. Uh, you know, especially for our guys who were kind of big. But those guys just swallowed them up. Um, and, you know, Cook, Mr. Lyons and I talked today, and, and sitting there in Laidley with 300 people opposed to the 20,000 that it's built for. It's kind of like a, a scene out of a murder uh, film because it's just <laughs> slow echoes. The weather was terrible. I mean, you got the beautiful capital in the background, but it's just our kids, it's just, they, they were in awe with the stadium. And, you know, it, it was a good step for us. I think our kids get, got the opportunity to play a good football team with a lot of talent, um, and they showed a lot of promise. And, and again, we, we killed ourselves a lot in the first half with the uh, turnovers and, and not being able to tackle and, uh, you know, those things kind of came back to, to bite us like they did all year long. Take us back to that first round playoff game, Parkersburg South. And really start at halftime because that's when you guys really flipped a switch and came out to play in that second half and really the last minute and how crazy that minute was. Yeah, I mean, we, at halftime we kind of talked to our offensive line and, and challenged those guys because they talked all year long about how, how good they were and how great they wanted to be. And we kind of told them, you know, hey, you haven't done it yet. Show me. Uh, and we, we kind of put it on their back. You know, like I had 19 carries for, you know, 85 yards in that second half. And, I, and that was just saying, hey, here we go. Give the ball to him and let, let him go. He's our best player. Uh, and then let our line do their job. And then you go into that last minute, we get, 
we get a touchdown. Uh, you know, Hunter makes a great throw before guys coming into his face. Finds Malachi, hits him. Uh, we score, kick the ball off to them. Uh, you know, they very first play, uh, they give us a targeting call and and then tack on another 15 yards to it. So a 30-yard penalty puts them down on their 20-yard line. Uh, it took them eight plays to score, but they scored. Uh, with 19 seconds left, uh, you know, everybody on our staff's like, we're going to be fine, we're going to be fine. It's all about field position. And I was just, you know, praying to God that they kicked the ball to Niger Malachi. Unfortunately for us, they kicked it to Niger, and the floodgates opened, and, and he took it to the house. What's your view, pardon me, from the sideline? Give us, as you're watching that kick, as you're going, man, I hope they kick it to our guys, and you're seeing it come down, and as you see that play develop, what's going through your mind? Uh, as soon as, like, Niger caught the ball, and as soon as he caught the ball, I, I kid you not, man, it, it looked like a Mack truck hole. And Malachi ran first, and I was like, God, I hope he has the ball. And then he ended up blocking the punter. And, I, I mean, there was nobody even close to Niger except for uh, their one corner who was in the middle of the field, and they tried chasing him, but it was just he didn't stand a chance. And then I just happened to look down the sideline, uh, you know, tears rolling down my face because I was so excited for our kids. But, like, 30 of them were on the field. <laughs> Coach Faircloth's trying to grab them, and then I try to grab them. And, but it was, you know, everybody was so excited. There was ended up being 20 people down in the end zone tackling Niger. And to see his face coming off that field, you know, everything that that kid's worked for for three years, that moment paid off for him. Yeah, very special. Yeah. Very special. And you guys had to rebound in that game. Not only that first half, but you were coming off a very tough loss in pretty bad weather conditions in that final game of the regular season. That put you on the road that week. What did you see from your team I'm sure something you already knew about them, but maybe raised to another level to be able to face the adversity that you faced, to go on the road and turn that switch at halftime and get a huge win. Yeah, I think, you know, uh, in regards to what everybody thinks, because uh, everybody, why'd you lose that game uh, on purpose? Uh, I, that wasn't the plan at, at all uh, with Spring Mills. That the field just couldn't hold up anymore. The rain was terrible. Um, you know, Chad and I talked afterwards, and it really was whoever scored first was going to be able to hold on to that because nobody could do anything offensively. And, uh, you know, everybody knows what Chad wants to do with Spring Mills as far as throwing, and everybody knows what we want to do. We're trying to get the ball to our athletes, and neither one of us were able to do it that night. So it was frustrating, um, you know, going into that. And then, we, But we went to the, into the playoffs, and we told our guys, you know, you can't think about that and, and think about where we've been over the last three years and all that adversity that we have faced. Uh, and let's carry that in, in, into a, or to this playoff and show the, the rest of the state that we can play. And uh, I tell you what, I, I've been there for three years, and I don't think I've seen a more focused uh, group than they did for that week of Parkersburg South. I mean, uh, they stayed every day afterwards to watch film. Uh, they were lifting. Uh, practices were great. Um, and then, you know, we went down to the hotel, and I sat there with two of my assistant coaches and watched, you know, 30 kids jump in a pool and, and enjoy the moment. And... Uh, and then that night we watched Mossman's game uh, in, the, in the hotel. And just to see all those kids there, that's what it's about, man. That's what football is about. Wins and losses are nice, uh, you know, to keep track of. But at the end of the day, man, the camaraderie and, and the family that, that football gives you is more special than anything that any other sport can give you. Take us through the evolution of the quarterback position for the Hedgesville Eagles this year. Start with Ellie Ash, then towards the end of the year, kind of progressed into something else. By the end of the year, you mentioned Hunter Coe at quarterback. Up until, I believe, that Spring Mills game, he hadn't taken a snap under center. Yeah, no, I mean, um, you know, at the end of the year last year, Jason got thrown out against Hurricane, and Hunter came in and, and threw pretty well, played it pretty well. So we had, uh, we were then there an assumption that it was going to be Hunter going into his senior year, and um, Hunter decided to focus on baseball, and he played travel ball all the way up until the second week of August, which kind of killed me, uh, not having him all June. And Owe really developed into a really good quarterback. He's young; uh, he's still got a lot to learn. But um, you know, I couldn't take the ball out of his hands at the beginning because you know he put up uh, you know 1,100 yards in six games. He had uh, close to 500 yards rushing, and and we were five and one. So. Um, you know, Owe did his job and did what we asked him to do. But when we got into the the, the beast of the schedule with Musselman and Martinsburg, I was planning on starting Hunter uh, the game of Mus the Musselman week, uh, and he went out to hang a tree stand and actually cut his hand open. So uh, that kind of hurt our plans there. Um, but uh, you know, we're lucky and fortunate to have Owe back for two more years, and I think he is going to be a really good quarterback. I think he uh, needed to sit back and watch a little bit of how Hunter did things as far as getting out of the pocket, keeping his eyes downfield, and then making throws. But it was definitely a roller coaster. Uh, we were still able to keep the ball in Owe's hands with uh, him being a receiver and running back. But Hunter gave us some, some things that Owe just couldn't there at the end of the year. 
We are talking with Hedgesville head coach Joey Urish, head football coach, and we'll continue our conversation on the other side of this break at the bottom of the hour. We've got our special feature as well, tomorrow's date in sports history. Up next, it's news, weather, and an NBC Sports Radio update, then more Miller time. CBS News update. Unhappy that General Motors is laying off 14,000 workers and possibly shuttering five plants, President Trump suggests he'll retaliate against the country's number one automaker. CBS's Weijia Jiang has more. During the press conference, President Trump himself was tweeting and again using the word disappointed and saying that he is considering cutting all subsidies to GM, including for electric cars. White House spokeswoman Sarah Sanders. The president wants to see American companies build cars here in America, not build them overseas, and he is hopeful that GM will continue to do that. GM issued a statement saying the company is committed to maintaining a strong manufacturing presence in the U.S., pointing to its more than $22 billion investment in U.S. operations over the past decade. It says its restructuring plans are designed for the company's long-term success and for growing American jobs. CBS News Up. Update, I'm Pam Coulter. Now, with your local forecast, weatherman Bob Kukin. You'll want to dress for wintry chill as you head out this evening for any particular reason. We are looking at temperatures in the 30s, but it'll feel like the 20s at least, if not the teens at times. We get the winds coming in from the west, 15 to 25 miles per hour. And during the daytime tomorrow, even with again a mix of clouds and sunshine, Highs only in the upper 30s, wind chill factors, teens and 20s. I'm Bob Kukin, Talk Radio, WRNR. The future doesn't wait. Why should you? Blue Ridge Community and Technical College offers over 50 degree and certificate programs in education, IT, culinary arts, engineering, and so much more. Small class sizes, flexible schedules with evening and online classes, with affordable tuition, plus financial aid is available to those who qualify. Now you can go to college. Visit us online at blueridgectc.edu. That's blueridgectc.edu. Stop waiting and enroll today. With four new car dealerships and four used car dealerships in three states, Parsons is the largest used car and fastest growing new car dealer in the tri-state area. Take Parsons Ford with huge savings on hundreds of new Fords, financing from 0%, Parsons goal of financing for all, and Parsons famous above market trade-in allowances that help make Parsons number one for used cars too. See why so many won't buy anywhere but Parsons Ford in Martinsburg. We became number one by making you number one first. Parsons. Your NBC Sports Radio update starts now. Fail to the Redskins. I'm Jeff Biggs, and some big news in the NFL on this Tuesday afternoon as former 49ers linebacker Reuben Foster, who was cut after being arrested on Saturday night on charges of domestic violence, has been claimed by another team, and according to reports, that team is the Washington Redskins. Tonight in college football, the next-to-last playoff rankings will be announced with Georgia expected to replace Michigan in the fourth spot. The final playoff rankings will be released on Sunday. Tonight in college hoops, it's the start of the ACC Big Ten Challenge with number 9 Michigan State visiting Louisville, and number 3 Duke will be home for Indiana. In the NBA tonight, the Knicks will go for four in a row as they hit Detroit with LeBron and the Lakers in Denver to take on the Nuggets. And on the ice on NBCSN, the Vegas Golden Knights Knights will face the Blackhawks. I'm Jeff Biggs, NBC Sports Radio. Fire off this season with Sunfire Energy Solutions. When it comes to gas, wood and pellet fireplaces, stoves and inserts, we've got it all. Quadrifier, Harman, Heating Glow, Vermont Castings and much more. Come by and see the 3,000 square foot showroom located in downtown Martinsburg with hundreds of outdoor amenities to choose from. Are you already dreading the expected heating bill increases? We can help. Sunfire Energy Solutions is your total energy experts. Find out more on Facebook and sunfireenergysolutions.com or stop by the showroom today. A DUI arrest can have a devastating impact on one's life, your job, your driver's license, and in some cases, your very freedom. My name is Harley Wagner. I own and operate West Virginia's only exclusive DUI defense firm. Since 1999, I've been representing citizens throughout the Eastern Panhandle and state of West Virginia charged with DUI. Let my years of training and experience work for you. The initial consultation is free at the Wagner Law Firm in Martinsburg. Phone 304-901-7400 or online at WestVirginiaDUILawyers.com.
And we welcome you back into Miller time on this Tuesday evening with you for another about 25 minutes or so till 6 o'clock. Then it's off to NBC Sports Radio. Matt Miller and Matt Crawford joined in studio by Hedgesville Eagles head football coach Joey Urich. Before we get back into our conversation, we cue the music. For our regular feature at the bottom of each hour as we give you something to talk about tomorrow around the water cooler. So, Coach, in the office tomorrow, you can bring some of these up with uh, your coaching assistants. We look to tomorrow's date in sports history. Some of the events that happened on November the 28th. Let's go to how about 1929. Chicago fullback Ernie Nevers sets the NFL record for most points scored in a single game with all 40 points in a Cardinals 40-6 to route of the Chicago Bears. That's pretty impressive. Very. He had uh, a record six touchdowns and added four extra points. You got guys that can score and kick PATs too? Actually, I think Finnegan probably could pull that could, off yeah. this year. Yeah, I do. All right, so there you go, 1929. There is uh, number one. How about, uh, let's go 1953, the CFL Grey Cup at Varsity Stadium, Toronto. The Hamilton Tiger Cats defeat the Winnipeg Blue Bombers by a 12-6 to final, a defensive struggle. Let's move on to 1957. Warren Spahn of the Braves wins the Cy Young Award. Again, kind of late with some of those yeah. uh, baseball awards. That say, the Cy Young came out, what, two weeks ago? Yeah. Over two weeks ago at this point? Yep, somewhere in that ballpark. Let's go to 1967. The 33rd Heisman Trophy Award goes to Gary, I hope I say it right, Baben, B-E-B-A-N. I must admit, I don't recognize the name. He was a quarterback out of UCLA. And let's go one more. 1972, the L.A. Dodgers trade Frank Robinson to the California Angels. Just a baseball note that we can end on. Or do you want to end on tennis? Are you a tennis, you're, you're are you a te tennis fan? No, no, you're no. the tennis guy in the room. So. Yeah. I was going to say, well, that's why I bring it up, because <laughs> I'm looking at this picture, and I'm going, that's Andre Agassi. In an All-American final on tomorrow's date, 1999, Pete Sampras beats Andre Agassi to win his fifth and final ATP Tour World Championship in Germany. So there you go. Two greats from tennis, Pete Sampras and Andre Agassi. Tomorrow's date in sports history. I have no idea who any of those guys are. What? Great hair. Yeah. Both of them. Sampras Both of them. And Agassi, great hair. Agassi's the one that kind of brought a little pizzazz into the tennis world because back then everybody's the white shorts the generally white shirt and then the long how much pizzazz is there really in the game well that tennis? was the thing andre agassi came along with the hair and he wore bright yellows and other colors and it you were is. like who's this guy and uh but he was good and that was that was the reason he was able to kind of crash the party because of how good he was have to do some tennis history. He was a happy Gilmore of tennis. Yeah, All he right. was. Yeah, I mean, he right. head banging and breaking clubs, and he was he was pretty legit. Yep. He was he was my tennis. I I, I grew I played tennis in high school. As a result, of, I mean, tennis in that day in the '80s was at its heyday in America. Jimmy Connors and uh, you know McEnroe and and all of those guys. It it was uh, it was something to behold. So I'm sorry you missed that time, <laughs> you young buck. I don't know how I'll sleep tonight knowing I missed all that. And, you have to go. That's why there's a thing. It, look, they created this thing. You can go look anything up at, at your fingertips. It's called the Internet. Just go do some searching, and, and you'll find some great, great stuff. You'll send me those names again. <laughs> all right, Coach Jurish, let's, uh, let's continue to um, talk about the future. Hey, we were talking about tomorrow's date in sports history. What does tomorrow bring, do you believe, for where your football program is right now, what the seniors have been able to do this year to take yet another step, and now leaving it in the hands of the underclassmen to carry from here? I, you know, replacing kids like Jesse Kane, Nigeria Smith, and Anthony Fortune, and EJ Heath, and, and Finnegan. I mean, we, we've got some great seniors that we're going to have to replace this year. Um, and they've been with me for three years, and they've helped kind of set the bar on what we have expected now at, at Hedgesville. And we talked to him about that and congratulated him because, you know, for the first time in probably over, you know, three decades, 
Um, they're a part of a class that made the playoffs for three consecutive years. And uh, they were able to get that first win this year, so now that bar is even higher than what it was and has been for the last two years. Um, so uh, those guys started in the weight room. Um, some of them are in there at 5 o'clock in the morning with Coach Faircloth and carried that over to the off season. And they kind of set the example of what we expect our guys to be uh, from here on out. So. Um, you know, we've, we've started in the weight room already, um, kind of just a voluntary thing if those guys want to come in and get, get into it. But um, we won't start back up heavy until after the first of the year, kind of let the guys enjoy, um, you know, Christmas break and, and, you know, exam season and all that stuff. But, uh, you know, they're excited about it. I think those young guys really enjoyed that playoff run and got to, to taste that little bit of victory. And uh, they're anxious to get back and get going. You mentioned Finnegan Hall, and you're – playing career or coaching career have you had a kicker like that before not even close not even close um i think the closest kid that uh um anybody's had around here is uh Corey uh smith over at musselman i mean he, he had a leg for him and he ended up going to alabama and then finishing his career at wvu but uh you know finnegan's got a 1470 sat he's got a 4.6 gpa um you know, he's just a great kid. Uh, he's a kid that you're going to see over the summer hanging out at the tennis courts uh, with his seven and eight uh, little brothers and sisters. I mean, he's got a huge family. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I don't think I could have asked for a better human being to be a part of my life, and, and I'm going to miss him dearly. He's got an eighth grade brother coming up. I told him I had to teach him everything that he knows about kicking. Um, but just to have that confidence to go out there and know that you're going to pin that defense back to the 20-yard line or if you get inside of the the 35 that you got a good chance of, of making a field goal um, and then you know to be able to punch somebody and keep them in the corner uh, was really a, a weapon for us this year and last year. Yeah no doubt a, a weapon in that kicking game that can change a game you know you think of the uh, three facets of the game and a lot of people kind of forget special teams but on the high school level I think it's probably even more important so many things happen when those units are out there. Yeah absolutely I mean you look at uh, what Ricky Barrett's been able to do at Martinsburg uh, and blocking five punts this year and, and, you know, four of those going back for touchdowns. And those, those are momentum changers. Um, I think we were the only local team that did not give up a block punt to Martinsburg, so credit our punt team for that. But, um, you know, it, 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 it does a tremendous thing for you when you're able to add that third facet of the game into, the, into your game plan. Um, and teams now got to prepare for that. And when we tried to mix some things up on special teams this year. You not only lose some key seniors, but for those players coming back, your schedule is going to look a little different next year. Tell us about that. Uh, it's it's got even worse today. Uh, we we just added Broad Run, uh, the powerhouse out of Virginia. Yeah. Uh, we added them today. Um, we put uh, Brooke, who's you know predominantly been a, a good p a program in the state, and they're down, but they've always got those tough nosed kids. Uh, we put Morgantown on the schedule. Um, to, you know. Um, and then uh, add a Willing Park. So with them, and then you add Heritage in there, there's five new faces that our guys are going to be able to see next year. And it's exciting for them with what we already have to face every year in the EPAC, which is a strong conference now, having those five games. It's going to put a lot into the preparation for them in the offseason. How tough is it going to be not eating buckwheat pancakes? Uh, <laughs> We didn't get to we didn't get to enjoy pancakes this year, man. It was pouring down yes. rain, and and our guys were soaking wet, and we wanted to get out of there. And I know it kind of upset Preston a little bit, uh, but uh, you know our, our guys were looking forward to it, and and we just ran out of time, and, and the weather was awful. You mentioned that awful weather. We were down at that Preston mm -hmm. game as well. How much did weather impact your overall season? I mean, I know it impacted everybody here in the Panhandle and across the Mountain State, but a crazy weather year. Yeah, it was awful. Um, our coaches kind of joked at the end of the year because we always talk about gear because those guys are gear hogs. But uh, they all they all said, you know, next year we got to look into getting rain gear because as bad as this year was, it's probably not going to get any better. <laughs> but uh, you know, when you when you look at five or well, four of our games, we ended up being moved to Thursday night, um, and I don't think that's ever happened uh, in our area. And Denny said that he couldn't think of a time ever in his career where that many Thursday night games were played. Um, it throws off the schedule. It throws off not just your preparation schedule but your recovery schedule yeah. and uh you know friday it's nice to go out and scout and see some other teams play but um you know most of the time those teams were off too so uh, it was an up and down year and i don't think we could ever get our foot in the ground and get and, and get comfortable with what we wanted to do offensively defensively we had a great year We've got only a couple of minutes left. You're certainly welcome to stay through the uh, rest of the hour as we'll uh, turn a little bit of attention to uh, some of the regional sports, uh, Wizards, uh, Islanders, uh, Capitals game last night. And 
what was this that I heard from NBC Sports Radio at the bottom of the hour? Your Redskins, Matt, picking up uh, uh, another linebacker. I, I, we don't, we'll get into it later. But, Joe, you're certainly welcome to uh, express your thoughts on those things as well. But I want to ask you before we hit our next break to take us back to 2001. You know, the state championship weekend, the Super 6 at Wheeling Island Stadium is going on this weekend. The double-A game Friday night, triple-A Saturday at noon, single-A game on Saturday night. You've had the privilege of walking out on that field as a quarterback at Martinsburg. First state championship game appearance for the Bulldogs. How much does that stay in your mind, and what was that experience like? What are these players about to experience? Uh, that feeling they'll never get again in their entire life. Um, to be able to go out there in Wheeling Island and get fans going crazy on both sides, and then you you know you you walk into your locker room and everything's polished and cleaned, and it's kind of overwhelming at first. And then you go out there and they line you in a straight line with captains up front and offensive side of the ball and defense side of the ball, and then they introduce both teams and then you shake hands, and, and then it's just a, a loud roar. Um, so for us initially, it was just like, wow, this is awesome. Um, and then, you know, three plays in, I throw a touchdown pass to Brandon and mm -hmm. it seems like everything is going to go exactly how it's planned. And then Aaron dislocates his shoulder on the very next kickoff. And it's like, you were high and then it went immediately low. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm glad and I always pick on coach Walker about us being the best team that, that he ever had. Uh, <laughs> but we set the tone. Uh, I think we, we did anyway from my sophomore year on. Uh, on what was expected at Martinsburg, and they've been able to carry that tradition on. And those guys now are just uh, being able to enjoy the moment because they've been there so many times. And, uh, you know, Spring Valley's kids said it the other day uh, when they were there first time uh, two years ago, it was kind of like a shock and all type thing. And then last year it was kind of like we were up and then down and same kind of concept that we had. But this year it's actually going to be an exciting game for both teams because now it's the third year in and they know each other pretty well. Um, I think everybody in the state's in for a good AAA uh, football game. Yeah. Now, again, the weather will not be the greatest. The last check, it's about 49 degrees or so. So not bad temperature-wise, but rain in the forecast for Wheeling awful. Island Stadium. That's what I've been hearing. Yeah that they've been uh, having some mud kind of seeping up through the turf. Yeah, they had a flood and it ruined the turf and they never had an opportunity to get it taken care of and they've been power washing it and trying to roll it, and, but it looks awful. I mean, if you've seen pictures of it, it looks just like uh, Ben Gum's year <laughs> and Martinsburg's year. <laughs> don't don't bring that name up again. Don't bring jinx that jinx name up. But Joey, thank you so much. Again, you're welcome to hang with us if you would like to. We'd love to get some of your thoughts on the Redskins as a Steeler fan especially, and uh, and their, their recent move. But uh, we've got more Miller time coming up. Uh, stay tuned. Shop Miller's Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram today and find over 150 new and used vehicles to choose from. From gas savers to SUVs to four-wheel drive trucks, all of the new and most of the pre-owned vehicles come standard with a lifetime powertrain warranty. Now you can drive away with peace of mind knowing your vehicles are covered for life. And the best part about it, there are no service requirements with Miller's, and it's all included to you at no extra cost. That's right, no extra charge, and you're not required to service with us. Just follow the manufacturer's recommendations, and you're covered for life. With great quality vehicles and a great price, you can't miss with Miller's Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Our courteous, experienced, and professional staff is waiting to assist you with finding the perfect vehicle that fits all of your needs. Unbeatable deals and excellent Financing is right down the road. Stop in today. Miller's Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, Route 9 and Kelly Island Road, just east of Martinsburg. Or online at MillerChryslerJeep.com. Miller's Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, home of the lifetime powertrain warranty. I'm an official sounding scientist, and I'm here for a comfort experiment. We're going to recreate the way your home heating system works in your car. Crank up your heat. Blast it at your face. Starting to break a sweat? This is Central Heating. A Mitsubishi Electric Zone comfort solution with hyperheating allows you to get just the right amount of heat exactly where you need it. Fast. No cold drafts. It's comfort made personal. This concludes our little comfort experiment. Take advantage of Mitsubishi Electric's 36 months 0% financing on qualifying systems at McCray Heating and Cooling. Celebrating 80 years in business with free estimates available online at McCray. Freeway.com. Just where will the Mountaineers go bowling? Hi, everybody. I'm Tony Carita. That story coming up on today's Mountaineer Report brought to us by Kroger, the official grocer of WVU Athletics. When you order your groceries online at Kroger.com or with the Kroger app, 
You can do your shopping anytime, anywhere, like the gym, the office, or your favorite comfy couch. Plus, when you visit Kroger.com, you can find hundreds of money-saving digital coupons. And whether you place your order on your phone, tablet, or computer, it's still your neighborhood Kroger. So you'll find all the fresh choices, low prices, and great deals you love. And once you've selected your coupons and finished your shopping, you choose a pickup time that fits your schedule. And relax while your order is hand-picked, just the way you like it. Then all you have to do is hop in the car and drive to the store's pickup location. And a friendly Kroger associate will load your specially picked order for you. You don't even have to get out of your vehicle. It's so convenient. Save time. Shop online today at Kroger.com. As the dust settles on the regular season for the Mountaineer football team, West Virginia looking ahead to finding out this coming Sunday where it will play its bowl game. Really, it's down to three possibilities for West Virginia. The Alamo Bowl, which is played in San Antonio. The Camping World Bowl, which is played in Orlando. Or the Texas Bowl in Houston. It looks as though if Oklahoma were to win this coming Saturday in the Big 12 championship, they would go to the college football playoff. Texas would then go to the Sugar Bowl. All right, now the dust settling on this Mountaineer football season. What do you say we take a look at exactly where West Virginia lined up among the other Big 12 schools? When it came to scoring, West Virginia finished second at 42 points per game, and to no surprise, Oklahoma led the league in scoring, hitting for 50 points per Per game. When it came to scoring defense, West Virginia was right in the middle at number five. The Mountaineers allowed just over 26 points per game. No surprise here. Total offense category, West Virginia at number two. The Mountaineers averaged a gaudy 520 yards per game. Total defense, again, West Virginia right in the middle, allowing 405 yards. When it came to individual performances, running back, Kennedy McCoy ends the season number eight in the league in rushing, finished up with 729 yards. That is good for 66 yards per game. Will Greer finished number one in the conference in passing average per game at 351. Greer was second in total offense at 343 yards per contest. That is today's Mountaineer Report brought to us by Kroger, the official grocer of WVU Athletics. I'm Tony Caridi on the Mountaineer Sports Network from IMG. Coming up, more Miller time. This is Lori from Bechtel Jewelers. And because we sell jewelry, that literally takes a woman's breath away. This can cause some scary moments. Let me explain and why you should not panic. When she opens your gift on Christmas morning, she may suddenly stop. Stop moving, breathing. All of a sudden, she freezes. You see, what's happened is that she's stunned by your gift from Bechtel Jewelers. The sparkle and shine of your gift of what's inside that little box simply mesmerizes her. And yes, takes her breath away. How long will this go? on we don't know for sure but after a few seconds you may find yourself saying breathe honey breathe honey gentlemen at Bechtel Jewelers we can advise that panic is not needed instead enjoy the moment and soon enough she'll inhale then exhale then look up at you with those big beautiful eyes and she'll wrap her arms tightly around you and you can expect her lips to find yours at Bechtel Jewelers Route 11 South in Inwood our jewelry takes your woman's breath away and we think you wouldn't want it any other way come see us at Bechtel Jewelers. We're back for our final segment on today's Miller Time. Thanks again to Hedgesville head coach Joey Urish joining us here live in studio. Good to uh, talk with him. Kind of put the finishing touches on a very successful season for the Hedgesville Eagles and anxious to see how things go next year. As he mentioned, some tough teams on that schedule, uh, but uh, some uh, good talent coming back and some good young talent that will be stepping in to fill those holes from the seniors that graduate this year. Always an uh, uh, interesting time, right? This football season seems like it went so fast. It went very fast. We were. I think it was the mix-up of all the yeah. the games and the time. We had done a couple Thursday night games that weren't Martinsburg and went to Preston on a Thursday afternoon game. So it's just, or was it, yeah, Thursday afternoon. Yeah, that was the Thursday afternoon. So it was. I think it was all that mixed together. And then five games this postseason. Yes. 
So just a lot going on. And you are asking questions going in, obviously, because every team has new questions as a season is beginning because you've lost seniors and who's filling in here and there. And, and boom, those questions get answered as the season's going along. And now here we are going, hey, we're into the off season. Yeah. And we're ready to start asking those questions going into next year. It's incredible how quickly it's gone. All right, let's start with some good news for your Washington Redskins. Let's quickly hear from Chris Thompson, who's back at practice. It felt good. Um, my feet were all over the place today. I was I was doing all kind of crazy stuff out there that's, that's unlike me, and uh, some of the running backs had some good laughs at me as well because I was tripping, and it was pretty bad out there, but I think that was just because I haven't been out uh, doing, you know, football drills and going up against people in a full month now so uh it's it's been a long time but it just felt good to be back out there with him first thing i noticed from his comments the ping pong game that was going on yes. in the background Did was that what that, that noise was <laughs> it's i knew it sounded like a ping pong <laughs> ball but wasn't sure hey man gotta have the ping pong the, table the, the, the media room, room is they, they couldn't pull him into a, a media room or anything i don't know but he certainly seemed to be uh, a young man excited to get back on the football field. I'm excited to get him back on the football field, to be honest with you, as long as he's 100%. I know the Redskins are trying to get people back on the field as quickly as possible. Quentin Dunbar came back against the Cowboys. He was visibly not ready to be back on the football field. Right. He was slow. He was falling all over himself because I don't think he's got that strength back. He had a similar injury to what Dwayne Grantham had from Martinsburg. It was a nerve issue in his leg. So you ju it takes a while to get all that strength back yeah. up, and you could just tell he wasn't ready. So I'm hoping that the doctors and the coaching staff and Chris Thompson are honest and said, okay, can you come back and be 100% for us? Because if not, then k keep him out an extra week. Well, an extra day to prepare, if you will. Extra At least two rest. couple days. Yeah, because it's, well, right, you're yeah, coming on. Yeah, on a Thursday, and then they're not playing again until Monday. Yeah. So really a week and a half. Important game, though, against a tough opponent in the Eagles. Must win. All right, let's let's uh, let's turn to the other news that came out uh, late this afternoon. Actually, the first I had heard of it, uh, I think uh, you were a little taken back by it as well with the NBC Sports Radio update at the bottom of the hour. Uh, a new linebacker in town? Reuben Foster. I had actually just read the ESPN article right before the NBC Sports update. All right. The Redskins pick up former 49er linebacker Reuben Foster. He was released over the weekend after a altercation, a domestic altercation with his wife and he is on a two-year probation has 230 some odd hours of community service in front of him and the redskins decided let's pick him up i don't get it i really you're bringing somebody who's got a criminal history recently into a locker room and into a position the redskins are fine in hmm. if you look at the redskins defense and really the redskins team one position that you can say okay they're they're okay on is linebacker. Yeah. With Preston Smith and Ryan Kerrigan on the outside, Zach Brown, Mason Foster on the inside, wh where's Reuben Foster going to play? When's he going to play? But why aren't you picking up an extra guy in the secondary who's still an extra offensive lineman? How about a wide receiver? A receiver that is <laughs> – don't get me started on the receiving core, but yeah, I, j I don't understand it, and I think it's bringing in a bad precedent into the locker room. All right, we've got less than a full minute to go, so let's quickly hit the NBA. The Washington Wizards, a 135-131 overtime win against the Houston Rockets yesterday. John Wall, 36, Bradley Beal, 32 in the victory. The Wizards are now 8-12. and 12. Hey, they've won six of their last 11, so maybe turning a little bit of a corner. Meanwhile, the uh, Washington Capitals on the NHL ice have now won six in a row. They skated by the Isles four to one big game Tom Wilson a couple of goals and Nick Backstrom passes Peter Bondra for second on the all-time scoring or points list 826 points not a bad day not, not a bad, bad night for the Capitals at all six straight I, again I love I said this at the end of the show yesterday love what Tom Wilson is doing since he's come back he is look like a completely different player next up for the Capitals Friday night they host the New Jersey Devils and by the way you'll hear that one right here following Miller time. Well, that does it for tonight's Miller time. You're listening to Talk Radio WRNR Martinsburg. NBC Sports Radio is next. Here's your local news from Talk Radio.